Hello and welcome. For those of you that know me, welcome back. Those that don't, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. Um, this is like the uh, fourth part of a renovation series of how-to plumbing. This part of the house, I am going to uh, change out this uh, tub and shower valve. I'm going to pull this old one out and we're going to update it with a tub and shower valve that's which they call a posi temp. Uh, it's to prevent senior citizens and kids from burning themselves when taking a bath because we know with the old standard two or three handle tub and shower valve uh, if you didn't know any better, you would just turn the hot water on if you're a child or a senior citizen or disabled. And you would just get strictly hot water and that way, uh, not paying attention, you would burn yourself. This is supposed to prevent all that. And what you see me doing here is I'm just capping it off temporarily because uh, there's another guy uh, that's working outside that needs the water. But... Uh, I'm just giving you a picture and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-assemble the shower together, the new one. And so I brought it back to uh, the house with me and now I'm in the garage <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, pre-assemble the new one. This is the box it came in. I picked this up at uh, the Home Depot. It comes with the uh, trim and tub and shower valve okay the part uh, you missed I took the insert of the uh, cartridge that controls the valve I pulled it out so that I can um, solder the copper pipe to the valve itself without uh, burning up the uh, plastic cartridge but uh, We'll put it back once uh, everything is done. This um, one thing that a lot of people don't know is these valves can be used for copper pipe, meaning the copper pipe will go inside and sweat to it. Or you can use uh, some type of female adapter and screw on to the other end. But this particular one, we're going to uh, we're going to solder copper pipe to this. And we're also going to install some air chambers. And these are the uh, caps that I will use for the uh, air chambers. And usually a air chamber on a half inch line, you, it's it's usually going to be around 18 inches. So all it is is an 18 inch piece of copper pipe that's with a dead end on it, those caps right there. And it's to uh, prevent the uh, water coming into your house. If there's a great pressure, it will absorb some of that pressure and you won't have that rattling in your pipes that you hear sometimes in houses. All right, what I'm doing here um, is putting a any eight inch spread. We in, in the plumbers we call it an eight inch spread, center to center of each uh, piece of copper pipe that's coming up and down, and that's four inches from the center of the valve on each side, and that's where we get our eight inches. And that's all I'm showing here is where I'm going to take off uh, the measurement to make it eight inches uh, from four inches from center to center and a total of eight inches. This is just a standard measurement that a lot of plumbers use. Uh, 
you can use less or more depending on the space you have to work with in the wall and the things you have to work around and if you've seen my other videos you've seen me use this tool here this is my tubing cutter it will cut uh, from half inch on up to one inch and there's no adjustments necessary you just stick the pipe in there and it'll just automatically go from half inch to one inch depending on the pipe that you put in there you seen I took a uh, it was actually four inches but I took it another half inch off to make up the difference and you probably can't see it really good right now but the uh, power tool does have a light on it where I can see the uh, pencil mark that I put on there and again I'm just prefabbing it up real quick and once it's prefab, then I'll break it back down, clean everything up, and we'll solder it all together. And if you notice the, uh, you see the light right there, okay, get the light back on. And if once I look through that little window there, I can actually see the uh, pencil mark. And as I was saying, uh, the older valve that was in place, the shower head was too low. Uh, anytime you're doing a tub and shower valve or just a shower, you do want the shower head at least six foot six inches off the floor to the center of the uh, shower head where it comes out the wall. And this is the part that I'm making up now. Okay, I didn't tell the truth on that one. Okay, this is the part of the air chamber that I'm making up. And I'm, uh, this is part of the trim. This is the uh, main cover plate of the trim. And the reason I put that on there is that I made sure that I had enough clearance for the uh, tub spout. And it wouldn't interfere with the uh, trim.
Yeah, this is my reamer, my little small reamer. This is to remove the uh, sharp edges and the burrs that hang on the edge so that we don't uh, get it all down in the pipe itself. And it doesn't cause any obstruction, anything going through there. We don't want it to catch on to that. So now we're going to uh, clean all this up, uh, sand it, put flux on it, and put it together and solder it all together. Okay, we pretty much have it all together. You can see some of the flux that's uh, the access flux that's shown on the outside of the fittings and uh, we're gonna take a rag we're gonna wipe uh, a lot of that flux off because we don't that uh, solder or go everywhere all over the pipe and it'll look a little messy and not only that down in the future once this is in the wall and that flux has not been uh, wiped off it will eventually cause the pipe to start uh, corroding uh, prematurely and that's not something we want and even though I do uh, wipe the flux off before I solder even after I am done with the job. I wipe it down again. It gives it a nice clean look once it's uh, done. And this is probably not the uh best thing to set it on uh, but uh, there's a lot of things I don't have to work with right now because um, I guess you know if you remember the flood that we had a lot of things we lost so I'm kind of improvising with some of the things that I have laying around uh, in this garage here which is not the uh, home that I actually live in right I mean right now anyway but uh, it was a temporary house until I got this one after the flood. So I'm just working with what I got. And I'm using this so that I can keep the uh, copper pipe up off the uh, table that's here. And I can have free range to solder the pipe without burning anything around it. Now you have a much better look of uh, <laughs> what I was trying to do. I do have uh, plenty of videos out there on how to solder copper pipe. Uh, if you don't feel that you're getting enough out of this one here, uh, you can go to those um, videos and check them out.
a little more detail than this one here. But what you see I'm doing here is uh, when I do go to the side of the pipe, I heat up the pipe and the fitting itself, the brass fitting. And once I'm ready to start the uh, solder to flow, I put the uh, fire behind the fitting. That way the uh, fire, the flame and the heat will suck the uh, solder right up into the fitting. That's what happens. That solder will follow the hottest point. So I'll start putting it behind the uh, fitting. And like I said, this wasn't the brightest idea, but uh, this is all I had to work with at the time. Make sure that when you do this, you have something a little more stable than what I'm working with. And again, um, once this brass fitting has been heated up, I normally don't even have to uh, start heating the pipe up itself because once I got one end heated up, it's, it, it goes pretty quick. Everything else starts uh, just solders right, right away because the heat is getting all over the place now. And this is a uh, propane that I'm using here. Uh, you can pick it up at anywhere like a Home Depot or a Lowe's, any hardware store. Um, the propane gets a little hotter, so it helps, you know, helps me solder the pipe uh, much faster. I do use, do like to use my uh, acetylene torch. I have a large acetylene, but that's usually if I'm doing a whole home repipe, repiping you know just steady on the copper pipe
once again I'm Claude Taylor thanks for watching if you like the video give me a thumbs up also become a subscriber